Moving on to the next segment, we have an industry perspective by Vishal Kumar, BU Manager, Phoenix Contact India Private Limited. May I call on stage, Mr. Vishal Kumar, please? So, good afternoon, all. And yeah, I think my schedule came a little bit early. So, today actually, uh, we are going to explain you about how to secure critical infrastructures. My name is Vishal Kumar. I'm taking care of business unit automation system in Phoenix Contact India. So just to brief a little about Phoenix Contact. It's a German based uh, multinational company and we are 100 years old and this is in fact our 100th year. And since last 30 years we are present in India with more than one lakh products. I mean to say, let your control cabinet or electrical cabinet is from any make or anyone. You cannot move ahead without finding a Phoenix contact product there. You can find connectors, terminal blocks, power supplies, search protection devices, RTUs, <coughs> different type of converters, IO cards, computing solutions. So all together we got actually more than one lakh products and our focused industry in India are energy process infrastructure where all our critical infrastructures will come and factory automation which is based on the digitalization part. And we got our head office here in New Delhi and we got our manufacturing unit in Prithla in India and we got a very good extensive system partner network across the country. So <clears throat> it's it's a classical architecture of okay we just in critical infrastructure we took just uh, water and wastewater industry you can see yeah okay a remote pump station it's getting connected to central location or integrated control center as our honorable uh, chief secretary mentioned this is the nerve and brain of the infrastructure and that's a single place from where you are just monitoring and controlling your entire smart city or so-called infrastructures so now you are monitoring your infrastructure from your nerve center that is the integrated control system or control center but you are not sure whether you are the only one who is monitoring or somebody is there on the back side who are monitoring these things parallelly. So that's where cyber security comes into picture. It's very easy to collect data, publish it in the network, <coughs> show it in your control center and monitor. But it's really difficult to secure that data. You have to make sure that okay, you are the only one who is monitoring or only the accessible persons are monitoring your data because data is too critical and uh, too versatile so you have to make sure that your system is secure so there why where actually we want to discuss about the cyber security part so let's discuss because always like in india a culture is there once after implementing all the system then only the rules and regulations will come so but actually that must not happen to uh, this sector because we are pumping all the data to a central station we are pumping all the data giving all the data to china google anywhere and after that we are trying to put the framework of laws and regulations so that's not the right method and especially in this it framework so there the approach is <coughs> okay let's have a look into the risk and <coughs> sorry consequences then the laws and regulations and the most highlight part is iec 62443 fortunately it started coming in India in one or other way in, in critical infrastructure industry. So if a cyber attack happens, of course, what all consequences are there? We will lose our data, the system will be down and uh, loss of know-how, reputation will get damaged. So in water industry, if you if you take, I will just give you a simple example. You are just actually okay giving your pumping station to opening to the control centers and you are not securing it. 
what will happen if somebody else from a different part of the world is accessing and changing the chloride and uh, chlorine and fluoride combination so this is a simple example let's have a look into certain attacks happened in the critical infrastructure industry <clears throat> it started okay we can say it started with stuxnet you can simply google what exactly stuxnet is it's a, a like okay a nuclear power plant attack happened in iran where a simple rtu not a pc or it hardware a simple rtu got attacked by a different nation so that is called stuxnet and it started from there and a lot of colonial pipeline it's a distribution gas pipeline where actually us declared emergency because of a simple ransomware attack in a single plc system or rtu system so it's a serious part it can be your system can be attacked in different way like okay introduction of a malware via your usb or external hard disk internet intranet people believe that okay if i am my system is not connected to internet then i am secure because my system is isolated the stuxnet first iranian uh, nuclear po power plant attack there the system was secure because it was not connected to internet still it got attacked so it doesn't mean that if you are not connecting to internet then your system is secure then human misconduct and sabotage so these are the different kind of threats in industrial control system environment let's have a look into some more popular attacks happened in the world and here you can see in the red color cyber attack behind mumbai's power failure so it's a it was a blackout in mumbai like uh, at least 2 years before this was also happened due to an attack on industrial control system a simple intelligent relay it got attacked and the and their power distribution system was blacked out let's have a look into the laws and standards it security act european union cyber security act and cyber resilience act is there but it's not mentioned here yeah fine so these kind of regulations are there and of course in india we are actually mostly focusing on this uh eu cyber security act in many of the cases there particular you can see under the basic security standard two standards are there for any kind of your security requirements one is iec 62443 second is iso 27000 and iso 27000 is very popular because in any of your it segment your it team always speaks about this iso 27000 standard but 62443 is a specific standard only for your rtu and control system network so we have to bifurcate it it security and control system security so we cannot actually okay simply putting a uh, like firewall in your network your system cannot be secured so there is actually separate standard called iec 62443 and today's our hot topic is iec 62443 it's a standard specifically for your control system right from the beginning like okay how the user asset owner how how he should maintain his system securely certain guidelines are there for uh, for that then how an integrator system integrator who is installing your system how he should be behave or how uh, what all guidelines he should follow so that is simply uh, that is actually covered there and most importantly how an oem like phoenix contact we should take care of the cyber security requirements so that is also covered under this standard so this is where actually we are dividing it and ot network it is okay on iso 27000 and ot is on 62443 iec 62443 this is actually uh, uh, the the highlighting word here so this is an extensive or standard with a holistic approach there you can see as an asset owner here the infrastructure owners how they must actually maintain the system that is explained in iec 62443-2 how a system integrator who is integrating all these solution how what all guidelines he must follow that is explained in 62443 again 62443-3-3 
that is actually system integrator policy how a software to be maintained how your network will be segmented what all firewalls to be installed so all these things will be covered into 62443-3-3 so now now we are again cutting down our topic to 62443-4 that is the most important let's forget about all the other because without 62443-4-1 and 4-2 the system is not going to be secured. What exactly 62443-4-1 and 2 is? So we'll just explain. One is asset owner, the critical infrastructure managers. So they will just keep 2-1. According to 2-1, you have to maintain your system. System integrator who is integrating your system. There it is actually based on 3-3 of 62443. The OEM who is manufacturing the device, that device must be secured according to 62443-4-1 and 4-2. So there now let's look what exactly 4-1 and 4-2 is. For that, this is called, if, if your device is 4-1 and 4-2 secured, then it is called 360 degree cyber security or security in depth. Your security is not starting from the control center, but your security must start from the RTU station. We are installing thousands of RTUs and pumping stations across the country and we are opening it to the internet without any security features. And that's actually really a dangerous situation. So there this 6243-4-1 and 4-2 comes into picture. 4-1 and 4-2 says like how you manufacture your device as an OEM because any RTU you take in the market, those are at least 20 years old and there was no cyber security attacks 20 years before while designing the product. So with that product, no one can address any kind of cyber security issue even including phoenix my my plc's are 20 years old i cannot actually address the cyber security issues or attacks with that old devices so there 62443 is ask, uh, telling or gu giving the guidelines that remove your old devices whenever you are giving a new rtu system in a cyber secured way you must design a new product according to the guidelines that is 4-1 so they give us a factory line and tell uh, asked us okay you just secure your factory in this 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 ways so we applied for that cyber security certificate of 4-1 in 2017 and my factory got cyber secured according to this standard 4-1 so i repeat again this important standard 62443-4-1 this happened in 2017 they certified, okay, Phoenix contact this production line in Bloomberg is certified according to 4-1. But my products are not certified, only my manufacturing line is certified. Then in 2018, we developed a product in that line and we applied for the certificate. Yeah, I, I manufacture my product in this production line, which is a cyber secured production line. Then the application procedure started. They rejected my product three times. Even after keeping all these guidelines. And after four long years, in 2021, my product got approved for 62443-4-2. So I got 4-1 in 2017, 4-2 in 2021. So investing four years in research and development and all these actually, okay, after a long journey, we got that certificate of 4-2. So that is the importance of 4-1 and 4-2 certification while implementing any kind of this kind of networked systems. So this is actually a, a classical, again, architecture here. You can see different segmentation has been given. Individual RTUs are given and according to 4-2, this RTU individually must be certified so that is the idea so with 62443-4-2 only we can just proceed for any kind of like okay cyber security system so a lot of solutions are there for that it's not like okay we are alone a lot of players are there with 62443-4-2 but that is actually the important point 
we would like to present. So without product certification, we cannot go ahead with uh, cyber security. This is called PLC Next RTU from Phoenix Contact. PLC Next RTU is the first RTU cyber certified according to 62443-4-2. I'm just moving a little bit fast forward because my time is over. I will take another one, one and a half minute only. Different security levels are there because this PLC can or this RTU can decide, okay, I'm getting the right firmware. I am communicating to the right people. Nobody else in the world other than the concerned team are accessing me. So this kind of intelligence is loaded into this kind of this RTUs, PLC next RTUs so that actually it can decide by its own. It is getting the right communication channels and networks. This is the certificate. 4-1 for the production line, 4-2 for the controller. Here you can see the difference. In 4-1 only my production line address is mentioned and in 4-2 the controllers or RTU part numbers are mentioned. These, these products which are manufactured in 4-1 factory is cyber certified. And this certification is given by TUV, SUD. Other than this, Exida is also providing this certification. So two international agencies are authorized to give the certification that is Exida and TUV. So It's an RTU with inbuilt firewall, inbuilt VPN, trusted platform module chip, then really open system, no programming, nothing, just, just like your mobile phone application, just put the con pump control system application, it will start controlling your pump, put DNP3 or kind of communication application, it will start communicating our different protocols. So no programming, no coding, nothing. In SD card, you will get the application, just put it, start your controller your system will start functioning if you want to replace it reinsert the sd card it's done multi-level security classifications are there so we, we are actually showcasing this device and the concept uh, the nearby star so we can just have good dis, uh, discussion there so this is the ideal architecture of an rtu station which is a cyber secured one according to 62443-4-2. So right now, as, as per the standard, this is the this architecture is the highest available uh, secured architecture. So uh, we would actually suggest our customers, okay, let it be from any make, but always stick to 62443-4-2 for critical infrastructures. And the last update, this is my last slide. If you are installing 10,000, 20,000 RTUs in different parts and after two years, three years, if a cyber attack happens, according to the guidelines of government of India, you have to update the firmware of your device. Now imagine this 20,000 devices are installing across different, different geographical locations. Then you have to travel physically there, update the firmware of this 20,000 devices. There is again a solution for that in 62443 standard. Update your firmware from a central location. Over a click, all your firmware will be downloaded to your 20,000 devices. In India, Power Ministry has already released a standard called IEC 62351. Of course, uh, firmware updation is not a part of that, but few, few further guidelines are coming. But 62351 is a subset of 62443 we can say because all those parts are cons like considered like but it is now for power industry but in the upcoming days definitely this will be a part of other industries as well so let's let's go with a cyber secured system be secure and be safe thank you Thank you, Mr. Vishal Kumar, BU Manager, Phoenix Contact India Private Limited. I would just like to call you on stage and also would like to call on stage Mr. Gopi Krishna Arora, Director and Co-Founder APC News Network to felicitate Mr. Pa uh, Vishal Kumar with a speaker memento. Mm -hmm.